And we are live with David Wilcock uh, in a very serious situation in which he has received uh, several death threats today as a result of an article he wrote. Part one is now on the, on the web on, at divinecosmos.com. And he will be releasing part two tonight, but we are also doing this over the air now to take some of the heat off him. We are going to bring on a person who is working in a sensitive capacity uh, around the world. He has been notified of the situation. He has the, um, the ability to get uh, the right people involved to make sure that David is protected. Let's put it that way. But this person will be... Um, uh, anonymous. They will be uh, not be familiar with the situation. So David is going to have to possibly repeat some of what he has already described when the person comes on the air. Maxine, are you still with us? Yes, I am. And I'm just honored and thrilled to be here. I adore David. I interviewed David and I, I have his chart in front of me right now as we're okay. He's well, thank you. And at some point, if we can bring you into this discussion, we certainly will. You've been an absolute doll. Um, we'll make it up to you. Uh, I, I knew that you would be sensitive to this situation, and just having you hold the space is really, is really fabulous. Uh, so let's continue with the situation here. Uh, David, what, what you're going to need to do is go over the situation for our caller. Caller, are you on the air here? We've got Anonymous. Are you live? Hi, you're talking to me? Hi there. Thank you so much for coming on the, on the call. I do understand that you work in a very sensitive capacity, that you were just notified uh, of the situation with David Wilcock, um, that you are concerned, and uh, we, we, we welcome your presence here on the air with us tonight. Uh, David will be happy to answer all of your questions and will go over everything uh, for you. David, say hello to Anonymous. Hi there. Hi there, David. I understand you've got a few problems there. Yeah, uh, it's, it hasn't been a very good day. <laughs> well, can you tell me at all what's been happening to you, lad? I have been following this Benjamin Fulford story for a long time. He has been talking for two years now about a lawsuit that was going to be filed uh, the, it goes back to the Chinese the Kuomintang who had gold that they sent to the Federal Reserve in 1938 on seven battleships the uh, bonds were issued against that gold it's all being kept secret it's part of a vast trove of gold that is held uh, as collateral against the world's economies they are actually not fiat bubble money they are secretly backed by gold. Very, very few people know this. You probably do, but <laughs> most people don't. Um, the, chi the Kuomintang are trying to get that gold repatriated or at least get a fair representation. Uh, apparently, it has caused a great deal of turmoil uh, that they are doing this. And this lawsuit, I think, even though it was filed, it's official, it's on record with Pacer.gov, and it was covered by Courthouse News Service. Apparently, these people who threatened me were very, very angry that I put all this story together about the lawsuit to try to reclaim this lost Chinese gold. Uh, they threatened Benjamin Fulford, apparently. He disappeared for a day and a half. There was a television show he was supposed to be on. The people on the show said live on the air that uh, he had been detained by a CIA-type group and held against his will in a hotel. Uh, then Fulford shows up a day and a half later, calls the guy on the lawsuit who I'm now in contact with and said, oh, no, I'm fine. I just went off to the mountains and had fun with my wife. And then I came home and I went to sleep. Whereas Chodowin Daikaku, this guy who is apparently the head of the martial arts societies of karate and Aikido in, in Japan, goes on the television show the next day and says that, in fact, he negotiated for Fulford's release, that it was very nasty. Uh, and so I posted all this on my website, including the videos to document it. The very next morning, I get this phone call saying that if I wanted to put out part two of my article, I'd better do it tonight because there may not be a tomorrow for me. 
That's the situation I'm under right now. Hey. Well, you better put out part two then. <laughs> as soon as this show gets done, I'm going online. That's what I'm doing. That's not disappointing me. Make sure you don't leave anything out. Put everything in. Put it all in. Let the world know. Okay. And we'll be watching, eh? I think it's time. I think it's time. We'll be watching, and we'll see. There was a lady who rang you. Was he kind enough to leave your phone number so you could talk to him? Uh, yeah, I mean, the insider who called me, I can call him whenever I want. Uh, he was called by two other people, one of whom said, do you like David Wilcock? And then, uh, you know, well, you might want to talk to him while you have a chance. Well, David, we like you. Yeah? And we'd be really unhappy if anything was to be happening to you. I appreciate that. I hope you can make that clear to all of yours. And all the folks out there that are listening in all the communities that we all know about. Uh, it, would it be helpful if David were to type into the Skype here uh, uh, a phone number where you could reach this uh, this contact? Well, it'd save me looking up in the phone book, Lassie. <laughs> right. So, uh, David, if you're able to type into uh, that information, I think that that, that would be very helpful. Okay. I have a theory on who this is, and I believe that that person may be standing by. If they're not standing by, uh, if there's a way for you to, to make, make that possible, or if somebody else who, who's with you can do that, uh, that'd be great. Well, this person I, would not come on the air, but I'm sending I, I you I totally the understand no, no, no. that. It's all right. Okay. I've interrupted my humanitarian work here, and uh, I don't think there'd be anything happening. So don't worry too much. Well, I appreciate that, and I know that I if you if you get grumpy, then some people will be very upset. Ah, I'd hate to be grumpy. It's Christmas time, you know, there. <laughs> I mean, okay, um, I don't want I'm to be gonna, grumpy. Uh, so, so, so this is uh, just for the people that are on this. Uh, this is a private phone number. It is not to go out under the air. Yeah, and please. The person is 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 not to be called under any circumstances. Uh, other than by our uh, very illustrious guest, who is 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 uh, on a secret job site out out in the the, the larger world. Uh, yeah, please call. Please make that connection. And uh, if let me make it clear is... to you, for all your viewers, you don't know this, David. The gold you're talking about is a small amount of gold. It's not a lot of gold when you consider the amounts of gold we're dealing with. We deal with vast amounts far in excess of what you think you know about. The gold is so wide and so vast that the real problem is how to keep it all down and keep it quiet. It doesn't matter. The lone foul days of all of that gunboat diplomacy is long gone, and the low-level fellows just try to think that they're somehow writing things that have nothing to do with it. And if any of these little lads who hang on with their public service jobs want to create a little problem, well, let's create a big fucking problem. Oh, well, sorry for the language. I've been out here in the field too long. But we know where they all live too. We know where all their families are. We know where everybody is. That's, that's very important. I think it bears repeating. So, uh, caller, because your voice is a little faint, uh, David... Well, I'm a long way, lay, Leslie. If you only knew how far away I was. I'm Let sorry, me tell you that I'm a long, I'm so far away you couldn't believe. Right, <laughs> but but uh, David, could you repeat that that for the public? I'll, I'm going to let you repeat that that they know where the, these people are, they know their homes, their their houses, their families. Uh, they, yeah, they know I all mean, the details. I can hear the caller very well. I hope that the audience can too. If not, we can probably post produce this after the live show and bring the levels up so everybody will be able to hear this. Um, it is true that I have spoken to people all across the spectrum at the very highest levels of every part of this cover-up. Uh, what this caller has notified us about is that there is much more gold even than what I was referring to on the show just now. The problem is how to keep it from really damaging human life on this planet, because if people know this, it could really 
cause a lot of pain for a while. Uh, I do think there needs to be a change. I do think this lawsuit needs to be made public. But I'm not sure that, you know, in, I'm not an expert. I'm not an economist. I just wanted to write about a story. I'm not the president. I'm not running the country. All I'm doing is <laughs> is writing about this. And, you know, I'm, what he okay. said was let me, that... Let, let me say that that caller, and, and this is for the anonymous caller here to, to address, but isn't it true that a lot of the gold is being taken off world as we speak anyway? Well, it gets put everywhere, you know. It's all over the place. It's not in one spot. Okay. Uh, you wouldn't want to put all your eggs in one basket now, would you? Okay, we're, we're uh, sorry, but we, we actually have to go to break. We don't have a choice on this. Uh, we will be right back with this developing story with uh, David Wilcock, uh, our anonymous caller, and Maxine Taylor, who's standing by. Thank you very much. Terry Cassidy, Project Camelot, Whistleblower Radio. We have a very uh, sort of developing story at the moment with regard to David Wilcock, who has received death threats for an article that he wrote on divinecosmos.com, and I urge everyone to go to that website. We are in the process. Uh, my webmaster, Tommy Hansen, is, is in Norway, and it's the middle of the night there, but he has uh, come online, and he is working on trying to get a PDF so that this is downloadable. We have gotten word from our listeners that they want to be able to download the, the article and, and distribute it around the net. Uh, and possibly other places. So, so we are working on that, on that now. Uh, we've got Maxine Taylor, who is an author um, and astrologer on the line, and she is standing by. She was my original guest, and she's being very gracious. Maxine, you want to say hello to everyone? Oh, absolutely. David, it's so wonderful to hear your voice again. I'm thrilled for you. And, darling, I've, I've already looked at your chart. You are safe. I don't have, like, uh, Pluto crossing my midheaven or anything like that? <laughs> no, darling, nothing like that. Nothing like that. You've got some awesome aspects. And if you like, you can call me when we're off the air, and I'll tell you what I see. Because your chart is private, and I don't want to share it publicly without permission. But I'll share with you what I'm seeing. Um, so please keep talking. Yeah. I okay. mean, this, this, this eclipse that we had over the weekend was so intense for me for personal oh. reasons that are unrelated to writing this article, I guess mildly related, but I have been through so much emotional cleansing and I had that the night of the eclipse, I was up all night in bed. I was cold. I was almost, I was so cold. I was like shivering in bed just because of the emotional intensity of the stuff that I've been moving through. And so to hear all this and, and be threatened in the midst of, uh, what actually has been very powerful and positive healing effects for me, it, it was kind of, it caught me off guard. Uh, I usually, I, I think I'm pretty brave to be doing what I'm doing, and uh, I don't want to, I don't want to be intimidated. But I just lost it on your show, so. Well, I, I, that's okay, and uh, you know, this kind of honest, uh, you know, sort of depiction of of where we're at is is crucial for people to. To start to be honest with each other uh, and understand that the people that do the kinds of jobs we do uh, do put ourselves on the line, uh, and we do need to bond together to protect each other. And white light uh, put surround each other with white light and protection. Uh, we've got anonymous on the line standing by. Anonymous, are you there? I am still here. Okay, anonymous. We we are really grateful to have you with us. Uh, we would like to talk about this developing story. I do want to ask you a question because it's my understanding that in some ways these kind of death threats, uh, which I have also received in the past, uh, are, are a type of psychological um, operation more than anything else. Do you think this is a PSYOP? Uh, 